Right, yep. And uh, so as long as he had his arms up, they were winning the battle, they were winning the fight. And so I think as, as we, we got to come alongside each other as men and uh, pray for one another, right? And not just, uh, you know, I, I know uh, we like to just say, hey, I'm, I'm cool, I'm okay, you yeah. know, and, you know, whatever, you know what I mean, whatever the, the, whatever the lingo is we want to use, you know, and kind of put up a wall and, you know, and got to talk about cars, I'm not sure, whatever, I don't, I'm not a mechanic, you know, or talk about whatever, you know, and, and uh, back for a fact. <laughs> <laughs> so, we just got to be able to, uh, like the Lord says, you know, to, to bear one of those burdens and fulfill the love of Christ, you know, it really, you know, hey, you got a struggle, you got this or whatever. Let, let's let, yeah, stand alongside them. Let's let's uh, you know if someone's going through something, make sure just hold hold those, hold those arms up. You know, pray yeah. for each other and and really come alongside one another. You know what I mean? And just thanks, dude. Uh, just come alongside one another. Just this is the time to uh, really <coughs> press into the things of the Lord and really do what God's called us to do. You know, uh, the the there's you know the few people that try to stop us. You know, uh, from doing what God's called us to do ourselves. Uh, there's the enemy, uh, our flesh, but I think self is, you know, you know, of course the enemy, he's got his own part, but, but I think self, you know, our, our own selves keep us a lot of times, yeah. uh, from, from going forward, you know, and, uh, I love Pastor Pillow, sometimes I'll, you know, hit the snooze a couple of times and, you know, uh, so that's just me, I gotta, uh, still go through that battle, you know, I hit the snooze a couple of times and still this morning, but, uh, praise God, we gotta continue to encourage and edify and, Exhort each other, exhort and and uh, so praise God. So this morning, um, I just want to speak to us for a little bit. I just want to share a message. I believe that God's put in my heart for this morning, and uh, it, it, it's got a title. It's called "It's Time to It's Time to Step It Up." It's time to step it up as men. You know, we're going to talk about three key areas. You know, I, I think if, if we, uh, if I, if we get, there's a whole line of this stuff areas you, you could cover, but there's three that God wants me to really specifically highlight today. There's three areas to step it up in, in, in our character, uh, in power, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit for a little while, and in our time. And so, uh, there's, why is the time to step it up? Because it's a new season, right? Is it, I've been hearing that all across uh, the country, even though we have friends in um, Texas, there's a church there, Pastor Darren Frank, and they said they're going to a new season. This is the new season for us as a ministry, and of course, practically it's spring. But but besides that, uh, you know, even even like say for example, <coughs> if you're gonna go play like football, you know, let's say there are people we know enough about football. If you're gonna go from like uh, high school, we use high school. If you're gonna go from high school to uh, like say the ne that next step in, in in the natural will be the college, you know, whatever. If you're gonna if you're gonna it's time you're, you're gonna you know if you're in the top. You know, 10%, then you're going to be knocked down a few pegs, so it's people when you get to college. But, so from that high school to college, it's time to step it up. I mean, if you're going to do some endurance, some training, so whatever it is. And so, if, so God brings us from season to season. He brings us from step to step. You know, when you start out, when you're born again, yeah. you know, you're an infant, so, so to speak, you know, spiritually, you know, spiritually. And then you grow. And then, you know, what's it saying, Peter? You're, you know, it's time to start eating meat. It's time to start feeding yourself, it says in Peter, you know. It's time to start, you know, uh, you know, get that fork and the knife, you know. Mom's not feeding you anymore, so it's time to get yourself, you know, spiritually and practically. It's time to start, you know, yes, we continue going to church, but we time, it's time to get that Bible every day, you know, and go to the next season, you know. So, um, yeah, read that out. 2 Corinthians 3, uh, 17 and 18, I think. Yep. Now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with unveiled face, beholding... As in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, and here it is, are being transformed in the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So we're being transformed continually. You know, that's that's a process. We're being transformed. And so, um, all right, so um, we had a new season, I believe, is at the doorstep for each of us. Um, God is calling us. To a new work as a ministry here, but also I believe as individuals, it's time for us to uh, uh, to see really, really seek the Lord. Uh, men, the time is the time isn't ten years down from the Lord. Uh, ten years down from now, you know, I'll do it when, when I when I think I'm ready. We never we're never fully ready for for what God's calling us to do. That way, He continues 
uh, to have us depend upon Him and trust in Him. So, uh, you know, we're, there's always things that we're always learning. So we're never, quote unquote, be fully ready to do something. We just got to take that, that plunge in the water, so to speak, and start, start swimming, start going for it. So the time is now. You know, you see the candy is now and later. It's not later. It's not now and later. It's now. All right. So you're at a place right now, and then, you know, God is, I believe that God is always speaking to us. We guys got to be listening, right? So we just got to be at that place and allow God to speak to us what is next. And all right, we're going to uh, go right into this uh, talking about our character. So, um, so what, actually, before we get to that, you know, just, you don't have to answer out loud, but what is, what is God calling you to do, you know? What is God speaking to you to do? What is, is there something that you're thinking in the back of your mind or you've been praying about, whether it's with your wife or with some other men? Uh, maybe you're, maybe you are in a transition, you know, with, with Gary and, and, and I know some friends that are, they're literally in a transition, whether it's a ministry of the church or, um, uh, this young man in the back, wearing the plaid, you know, he's, he's, he's in a definitely a new season. Yep. He, he went from over the road trucking. I don't know how many hours, you know, he did, he did 20 hours a week or something like that, right? Yeah, okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so he went from driving over the road, you know, all the way down to Texas. And uh, I don't know, I'm not trying to guess where, but he's all over the country, in the, the whole Midwest. And now he's, he's driving locally and he's still driving a lot, but he's in a new season. And so he's learning new things, maybe not new things, but a new, new way of doing things with the company. And so, yeah. um, and uh, so we're, Matt, is believing to do worship in different places. He's got a cool thing where he's um, uh, basically going to like a house setting and you know set up worship and ministry right in someone's house. So if, if you want to open up your house, uh, Matt's a gifted uh, worship leader, speaker, and um, house worship, you know. Mm -hmm. So I believe that God is always bringing us from glory to glory. So when we get somewhere right here, okay, then God's not going to leave you. I learned he's not going to leave you comfortable too long right there. He'll continue to push you and stretch you. Push you and stretch yourself. Oh, right. And so, oh, awesome. character. So we, we, you know, the character uh, for us in the ministry that God's called us to do, or even our marketplace. Our character is so important, right? You know, when you go, when you go um, uh, to to work, like say at a bank or there's a retailer or anywhere that handles money, they're going to want to make sure you know that you're honest, you're a man of integrity, and you know uh, you have outstanding character and. And have a good reputation, you know. You're gonna make sure they're gonna do a background check. You know, when I went to Teen Challenge, they do a background check. They make sure, you know, uh, I'm upstanding or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Uh, what are you guys looking for? You can't. You want to make sure I didn't steal a bank or what? All right. Uh, you passed, man. You're I right. passed. All right. <laughs> we looked so, over a few things, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I want to. I want to get the scripture in our brain. We're gonna. This is one we're gonna talk about for a little bit here. And I'm gonna come back to the notes. Um, if you're taking notes, Matthew 6, uh, 1 through 4, this is talking about, uh, in the book of Acts, they had to choose men, uh, we're going to read about their upstanding character, reputation, to fulfill needs that were needed in the church. Yeah. Alright, uh, now in those days, when the number of the disciples that was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the uh, multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. All right, so here's, here's verse 3. This is what they're going to look for. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men. Here it is, a good reputation. I call that character for today, so I don't know why. But So a good reputation. Number one, two, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. So, um... Whom we may appoint over this business, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So, the question is: is is your character okay in line with what your calling is? Okay. So if your your if if your character okay uh, is isn't ready for what God has called you to do. I believe that God's going to continue to refine your character before He brings you over to your calling. Does that make sense? Because if, if your character, you know, if you're going to be, if you're, let's say, for example, at the bank, I don't know, I don't know, for some reason I got the bank in my mind. So if you're, if you're, if you're um, um, looking to be the, the, I don't know, the vice president of Wells Fargo downtown or whatever, you know, and and uh, and you're not very good at handling money, there's your your uh, till's coming up crooked, you know, there's, they're probably not going to be promoted tomorrow. 
So I, I was just, I don't know, just one example in my mind. There's probably a, a billion of them. And so your character has, has got to match with, with what God's calling you to do. Oh, I, I was trying to think of the gentleman's name. Um, so this isn't, this isn't an original quote, but um, the, the, the quote is from about a year ago, a spiritual emphasis in TCLI. It says, um, don't pray for promotion. Okay, here's the, here the rest of the quote. Don't pray for promotion. Pray for a character that's worthy of that promotion. Okay, so we're going to pray for that character. Right, so the, the, the farther go you go, like say in the growth chain, whether it's uh, a bank job or whether it's uh, a construction, right? If you're just if you just got hired up the street for uh, the pay as you go construction worker, they're just going to hire you, you know. But if you're going to continue to be the next step, the foreman, you know, either you have to do some more background checks or you know whatever. It's going to be more character, I believe, involved in that process, um, or there's going to be more in that process. So if you're going forward with what God has called you to, is your character in place? Where God would promote you, and so um, integrity. One of those things is we're going to need integrity. There's a lot of things in character and a good reputation, but integrity is a, is a key. Um, we're going to look just uh, briefly at Acts five. Acts five. I'm not going to. I'll just read part of it. This is basically where they're they're selling a piece of property. They're selling a piece of property and they're giving it to disciples. They were they were literally selling things in the church. And they're giving to those in need, you know. And that's something we can pray about too. We can pray about, hey, is, is this person in need? You know, maybe I can, you know, have a garage sale or something. You know, help that person. But I already got to get back on check. Pray for ways, basically, <laughs> to, to help pe meet people's needs. So Acts, uh, or is that Gary Five? Five. Yeah. Where's my number? Okay. So I'm just gonna read this quickly. But a certain man named Ananias was with Sapphira his wife, and they sold the possession. And he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie, see, so they lied, to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? So while it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Uh, it says also in the uh, Psalms, the parentheses here, uh, so, uh, David says, when we sin, we sin against God first, and then against man. So, back to where we were. Um, verse 5, Then Ananias, hearing his words, it says he fell down dead and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard those things. Uh, wow, if that happened today, we told a lie, man, and, and just dropped dead. I mean... That we we we'd be living in a different time right now, right? You know, we're, our word is our word. Yes, 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 be yes. You know, be no kind of thing. We it used to be hey, a, a handshake, right? That was my word is my bond kind of thing. You know, but I don't know if that still stands today. All right, the young man arose and wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. They didn't know that his her husband was it her husband, sir. Yeah. yeah. They didn't know that her husband her husband was literally dead. She had no idea. Man. <coughs> I didn't really thought about that before. It just kind of hit me. She didn't even know that her husband was... Died. Died right there. She was a widow for three hours already. Man, I even... I don't know, it just kind of hit me right there just now. All right, and Peter answered her... Excuse me. Okay, verse 8. And Peter answered her, Tell me, whether you sold the land for so much? You know, the, the and she said, Yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door. They're coming. And they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. Her breath came right out of her body. The Lord gave it. And, so, and the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her out, burying her by her husband. And so... <coughs> So great fear came upon all the church and all who heard these things. So great fear came upon when when these so these men and women here at the church they, they were not walking in integrity. They were not walking in character. They were not they didn't, they were just they were literally lying to the disciples and the apostles about a specific thing. And so it's so important with our tongue that we let our yes be yes and our no be no. And you know if you don't know, it's okay. It's not, it's not copping out. It's not. Say, hey, I'm going to pray about it, and I will get back to you. Be serious. Hey, I'm going to pray about it. 
And hey, I'll get back to you. I'm sorry. I'm um, sorry I can't take that gig in Florida right now. It's just not working my schedule, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever. Just talking about Matt's situation. He's going to go to Florida and play in the Keys, you know, on the beach maybe. With, <laughs> with the, on, you know, whatever. That's be nice. Yeah, be cool. <laughs> so, um, so pray that God, so we want to continue to have our character refined. We want to continue all those things that involve the character. Um, so I'm going to look back at Acts 6. This is one of our scriptures for this morning. All right, Acts, Acts 6, 5, right after. So they, they had, it says uh, that, that uh, verse 3, men of, good, good, men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. All right, verse uh, <coughs> 5. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen. It says a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. And then there's another, there's another list of them. And then verse 6. And when they sent before the apostles, which, uh, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them, and then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. And so because they chose those men to do those things that it said earlier, to do the work there, and because they chose those men, it says there was a great work that was done in their home city. In Acts 1.8 it says, You should be my witnesses, and you should be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in the uttermost parts. So in Jerusalem, this is our Jerusalem. It's basically the, your, their local area, their local area. Secured the whole hillside and, and this. And so they, there was a great work. Uh, a great many came to, uh, were obedient. And it says, the word of God spread. Right? It, it was spread because men of God, it is be, I, brought, I brought a prop, I like using props, not just for the sake, but it, it leaves an illustration. It leaves an illustration. This is my little step ladder here. Men of God were taking. They meant I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what God has called me to do. But not only am I gonna do it, but I'm gonna do. I'm gonna step up. I'm gonna step up to this first step. I'm gonna do it with character. I'm gonna do it with integrity. You know, I'm not gonna. When the boss isn't looking, I'm not gonna slip up. Whatever I don't know, five or ten or twenty, or uh, whatever in my pocket, and just you know. Uh, or, or whatever, or merchandise or whatever. But I'm going to do it with character and, and integrity and full of the Holy Spirit. And then Stephen, as it says about Stephen, an, an additional thing is he was full of faith. He was full of faith, and it's the same person about a chapter or two later. He was, he was martyred for the Lord. He was full of faith, full of the Holy Spirit. This man was just chosen to do the work of the Lord, but he died serving the Lord, right? We're not, not just to, to die for the Lord, but he was living for the Lord. For the, so the first step we need to take, we need to step it up is our character. You need to step up uh, our character. And then, you know, only you and the Lord knows where that's at. You, know, you can have somebody, you know, have an accountability partner, and you know, those are good, and, you know, kind of bounce ideas off each other. Hey, what do you think I need to grow in? And not take it critically, but it's okay to, it's okay to take, um, uh, what's it called? Constructive criticism, right? Can you constructive, you know, and, you know, if you have a boss or if you have somebody, or basically if you have accountability or whoever, you know, constructive, you know, to, to a way to edify. Is that the word of the day, Dan? Edify? That's what I call it. All right, that's what we call it. Edify, encourage. All right, here it is. Mm. And so, for the character we're in, and that says, to, so do you desire, you know, just ask us, do you desire God to do a greater work through you? Right? We want God to do these miracles, these signs, these wonders, and healing, salvations. Not only that, but we want to, when you go to the McDonald's drive thru, or if you go to, to Walmart, or if you go on a mission trip, you want to see the evidence. You want to see those things, the miracles, and and uh, so if you desire to do a greater work through you, uh, God needs to do a work in you, right? So God to do a work through you, He's gonna to have to do a work in you. Um, I just heard that recently. Somebody credited this after Pastor Troy. That was not an original. I want to give credit to quote Pastor Troy Bond, New Orleans. And so pray that God will do this greater work in you. It's not always fun going through that. And it, but it's 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 good for us to go through that, that um, you know, for God to do work in us, right? I mean, he's pray for patience. You know, you all hear that, but you learn about patience. All right, First Corinthians, I'm gonna jump over to this one. First Corinthians 13 is not. It is a love chapter, but there's a couple of verses in there I think that are key for us. In our character, do we really? It says to love at all times. 13, 4 through seven. Uh, love suffers long. 
and is kind. I'm not going to just rattle these off like, you know, we're at a mirror, just get it done to it. No, it's listen to the wording here that Paul uses. Love is kind. Love does not envy, right? We're not going to be envious. We're not going to be uh, coveting maybe another person or a job or a ministry. We want to build up, edify. Um, love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. Love does not behave rudely, right? Whether it's, you know, again, you can think about if you're in the ministry, a marketplace, at home. You know, our first ministry, um, I don't know what pastor, but, you know, many I'm sure have said this, our first ministry is our wife or our spouse, if we're married and then our kids. Um, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked. Love thinks no evil. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, and love is going to believe all things, hopes and endures all things. All right, so our first step, we're going to step it up, we're gonna, is our character. We're going to pray and seek God, and, and um, uh, Francis Chan, I don't know the exact quote, but in the book, uh, uh, Crazy Love, he says to pray dangerous prayers. He said they're on a mission trip, or uh, this is just a, a paraphrase where um, he's like, God, do whatever you have to do in me that we can see your work happen through me. So he's like, God, do he, he didn't say, God, I pray that you do this and this. He said, he said to pray dangerous, crazy prayers that, that God can answer. And you can say, God, do, do whatever you have to do in me, you know, to, to see such and such happen. All right. The next step I believe that God wants us to take as men is to step it up is uh, being filled. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. And so if there's a work that the Lord is calling to do, so we can't rely on ourselves. We can't rely on ourselves. Our, um, we have to rely and depend upon the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'm gonna. I just because I heard this recently. Pastor Terry Francis was here speaking at Teen Challenge, and uh, what was it? I don't know what the actual tool was, but he used. It was talking about uh, it was it like a power tool or something? And he said the power tool is still a power, but basically it was out of juice. It, it was still it was still a power tool, but it had no power to it. So I don't I don't remember if it was actually one. It was a battery charger you plug in. I don't remember what. It's probably a battery charge. And so we had to to connect that. Then you had the power, okay. And so as Christians, God wants us to to live and to operate in power. A couple a couple of uh, weeks ago, I shared here about being out of the boat and and how how, G, how Peter literally walked on the water and how he just before that and walked on the water and witnessed. The, the uh, feeding of the 5,000, right? He just witnessed that. And before that, uh, very early in Jesus' ministry, uh, Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law of a simple thing, a headache. And so Peter uh, 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 was always with Jesus, and he was always seeing miracles. And after that, Jesus said, he said what? I'm going to turn over to, uh, where is that? Luke 24, 49. You guys with me? All right. Yeah, still think about Kenny's pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Luke 24, what's that? Delicious. Delicious and nutritious. Luke 24, 45, <laughs> and it says, um, just as Jesus here, he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. And he said to them, words in red here, Jesus speaking, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins shall be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So he's saying, start in your hometown. When you get the power, go to go to Superior, go to Duluth, go, go to your hometown. Start in Jerusalem. And he says, you are witnesses of these things. But verse 49 says, Behold, I will send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. God wants us to have that power. To, to witness, to be his uh, witness here on the earth. And so if we're going to to step it up to this next step, God wants us to step up and continue to depend upon the power of the Holy Spirit. Depend upon the power. And Zechariah 4, 6, I think it's the back of it, says, it says, not by might nor by power, but by his Spirit. By his Spirit. By his spirit. And so uh, not relying on ourselves, not even... Not even old methods that, that God has used in the past. 
We don't rely on methods or rely on those things, which are even though they're good, but we want to. What is what is the Holy Spirit doing now? What is God doing now? And so, um, this is just three, but I mean, there's a whole lot of things. But there's three things within the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to look at just three. There's a lot more to it, but of course, there's power, power to witness. In Acts one eight, it says, "You shall be my witnesses unto me in Judea, excuse me, in Jerusalem and Judea." And to uh, uh, Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. So, you know, we we've, uh, we go, you know, to different places. Of course, uh, we spend a lot of time at work. Um, if you don't look, if you don't work at a Teen Challenge and you're not, you know, you don't get paid to witness and share the gospel. There's other places and other ways you can witness. You know, you know, number one is uh, have that character ready. You know, have that character, have that example ready. And then I, I, I really actually. Uh, pray, for, you know, this is prayer. I, I've actually heard Pastor Scott recently. He had opportunities to witness, I think, at, at your job, where someone literally came to you. I don't remember the exact scenario, but someone literally came to you recently oh, yeah. and, and, and asked about it, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, and then um, I've had a job. Uh, uh, I witnessed uh, um, at, at, the, at, the, at the job for, I was there for four years, and, and, and so I got released from that job, and that's okay. God provided for the summer, and then uh, I worked at a uh, um, Walgreens, uh, you know, the, the, you know, for a year. But here's the interview, and um, he's like, you know, I was, I was honest, my, I was honest, my resume, I was honest in the application. I, said, I told him I would, I got, I got let go from the previous job, and so I'm in the interview, and this is like the manager, not just one store, but it's like the whole area at Walgreens, it's like the whole interview. This guy is really, really great guy, and um, so he's like, just, he's like, what happened last job? I said, what happened is, is I was, I was sharing my faith at the workplace. And so I'm not kidding. All he does is, okay, and then he goes to the next question. So I was just sweating it, like, what, what's he going to talk about in that question? He says, that's not going to be a problem. So he just goes on to the next question. And so as you're led by God, then we can be an, a, a witness verbally. But always, I think our character and how we live is really important. But, of course, Romans 10 does, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So pray for those opportunities. Um, I'm not going to stand as long, but I remember even going to the job if, you know, before we're going to teach challenge in the morning, I would pray. Pray, I, I, here's a here's a challenge. This week, at least a few times in the morning when you're praying, say, God, I pray for divine appointments today. Amen. Divine appointment is an interaction between two people orchestrated by God. You know, God orchestrates this appointment, and so uh, a divine appointment again is a, uh, is a what did I say it was? Is an interaction between two people orchestrated by God. So it might not happen. So what happened to me one time? I was I was going to work and I was like, man, God, I thought it was going to go home. And so I go to the holiday, I was getting gas. All of a sudden, someone just walks up to me and just start talking to him. So you don't even know, I don't know, I just, you don't even plan it. You just, but when you're praying it, I believe God will answer prayers. He's not going to... He does. Uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah that's, I want to clarify I read that. But yeah, he's going to, he's going to, you know, honor that. So, power. Number one, there's three things, you know, there's a lot more, but three things in the back to the Being filled, you know, taking it to the next level. You know, don't rely, look at, the, the Israelites, they collected that manna every day. When they were, you know, they got enough for that day. And so we got to take and spend time with the Lord every day. All right, boldness. When we went to power, boldness is similar, but it's different. Okay? Power, and then there's boldness. We're going to look just briefly here at Acts. Acts, where we got Acts 4. We're going to look at, you can read all of Acts 4 in your time. We're going to look at the last couple of verses for sake of time here. Acts 4. Oh, 28 and 29. And then for your homework also, uh, Acts 8. Philip was a man of boldness and hearing the Holy Spirit. Uh, one of, Acts 8 is one of my favorite chapters in, in the New Testament for sure. Probably one of even the Bible. Uh, Acts 4. We'll start at uh, 28. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness that they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. It says that when they had prayed, the place where they assembled together, it was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And then, so here's the, this, and then they spoke the word of God with boldness, right? The Holy Spirit isn't just for getting goosebumps and, and the feel good. That's, I like that too. But the Holy Spirit is to give you power and for us to give you boldness and to and to and to really live before the Lord and in the, in the, in the, in the world 
that, that's basically that. And so we're praying for the, the power, we're praying for the boldness. And uh, boldness and character. So in the marketplace, a lot, everyone, everyone here probably works somewhere, or most of us. And so even the character in, in, in the marketplace. I remember I was working again at, at Walgreens. And, um, and uh, so one of the vendors was coming in, right? They were coming in. And, uh, and so they were talking, you know, you know, lewdly about whatever. And I said, hey, you know, I understand you're doing a job, but I don't remember my wording. But I said, you know, this isn't the place to talk about like that. He said, oh, okay, we should just said, okay, it's no problem, you know, just switch gears. And then we were unloading the truck, you know, we get the, the semi truck from Walgreens, you know, all the boxes in and, and um, they were making comments, the other, the other employees, employees and workers were, you know, commenting about, you know, whatever. And uh, this wasn't really appropriate for the marketplace. And uh, I just waited until after this truck, you gotta wait for timing too, you wanna, I, I always, I uh, think I've learned that you wanna try to really tilt up in front of, in a group, and then you pull aside people, you know, right, to, to do coaching or teaching, whatever you wanna call it. And so I waited for the, the opportunity, the time, and then afterwards I talked to I was one or two of them, but I said, you know, that, that talking in a truck, you know, it, you know, it was, you know, uh, uh, I didn't, I didn't see what Bob, but Bob would say it offended the Jesus inside of me. So, you know, I said it wasn't appropriate, it wasn't, it was offensive, and so they'd say no problem. And so I think when, when you know people, when you let people the boundaries, the, the, you know, so I think that's important. Hallelujah. Ability, uh, the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit is going to give us ability to do what you cannot do on your own. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is going to give you supernatural ability. I'm not talking about Superman to leap over a building, but to, the, the ability to do what God is, what you can't do on your own. Um, so if you're going to step it up to do, to go where God has called you to go and to do what God has called you to do, we're going to need to depend upon the Holy Spirit. We're going to need to depend upon the Holy Spirit. So I was in a Mardi Gras this past, about a month ago, and uh, so we were there, and and uh, I was uh, we got there on a Thursday afternoon, and then uh, I woke up Friday morning, I had a dream um, at night that, that I just, just couldn't forget. I just woke up, it was just so vivid, and it reminded me of, uh, I'll share it first, but you guys will probably know right away. Um, so in the dream, um, in the dream, I was at basically it was like uh, it was like somebody's house, and there was a lady of it was either a, a house or a small shop or something. It was like a, sh a small shop, and the lady she was um, giving me something. She was giving me these uh, these vials, look just like this, but with the top off. So just like this, it was interesting, and I knew in the dream I knew it in the dream, but I knew what it was, and so she gave me several of these. In the dream, it was like several, but I don't know. My dream for some reason, I said, "Do you have one big one that I can just dump them all into?" And then, I don't know, she gave me uh, several of these little vials of oil. And there's several of them. And then, and then um, they were filled. And she just, she just gave them to me. She just gave them to me. And so, we're going to look real quick at 2 Kings chapter 4 here. Verse 1, 2 Kings. And so this was pivotal for this trip, but also for us as men. So a certain woman... Of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. I've got some people dying today. Yeah. And, uh, and you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditors, so we got people coming to say, Hey, you owe us. The creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, um, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? So the prophet's saying, what, what do I have to work with? What do, you, what do you have in your house? So God's saying to us, what, what do you have? I, I like what um, uh, Jesus said when he fed the 5,000. He's like, well, what do you have? Do you? So he went and found a boy. They had a couple of fish and five loaves. And, you know, the supernatural happened. They had something, and then God multiplied that. Look at that. And, um, and so verse 4, she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house, but, probably I'm sure it's different than this, but it was but a jar of oil. Got nothing but, but that. And then he said, go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. But when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels. So they go into houses and get the vessels. And she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full 
that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. And then she came and told the man of God, He said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debt. Go and your sons live on the rest. So that's Old Testament. So we translate it. We are the vessels of God. We are, we are I believe, uh, those, those, uh, those vessels, those jars, and the Holy Spirit continues to pour, pour into us. And he's saying, and the Lord is saying, bring me another vessel. Bring me another man of God. Bring me another woman of God. Bring me a man of God that's going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Going to have a good character. They're going to have boldness and power. Because I'm, I'm looking for a man of God of integrity. I'm looking for someone that Isaiah says, who will go for me? Who will go? Who will go? And he said, bring me. Bring me. I want, I'll bring me another man. Bring me somebody that, 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 can, that, can, that can pour the Holy Spirit into that, that will seek me, that will spend time with me, and then, and then that they, will, they will go, right? They will go and do what God has called them to do, right? Be world changers and city takers. See, this, see when, when, when the men, the men got a hold of this in the book of Acts. They got a hold of this. I think we just got to get a little bit more of this. They, they, got, they got the character, right? The character is so important. Right? If you can't trust somebody, why, why would you give them the keys to whatever? I'm just, uh, I don't know, it's coming to my mind. Why would you give them the keys to the bus? Or why would you give them the keys to the mission center or something? Or, or they got they got to have good reputation. they got to be full of um, uh, the Holy Spirit. they got to have, it says in Acts 6, wisdom. It says when they had those things afterwards, the word of God spread and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly. See, in Acts 2, they, they, they already had tarried. They already had waited. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter preached, and then they continued. He said in Acts, it says also, they added to the number daily. And so we're believing for, for more of those testimonies in the marketplace, more of those at the churches, more of those at Teen Challenge and, and the, in the job places. We're believing for more of those things. We will walk in character. When we be the example, those people will come up to us, but also we speak. And I think it goes hand in hand. I think it's both. I think it's both. So um, I said time, I don't, you know, but one of my last things is time. I need to step it up in um, managing and prioritizing our time. You know, we get the same 24 hours in a day, right? You know, 365 days a year. And, and uh, I think Leonard Raby says, uh, you, eat, you, uh, you sleep eight, you work eight. What do you do the rest of the eight? You know, that's what I think I never, Leonard Raby you know, quoted that one. You know, I don't know how many eights that adds up to in seven days and 52 weeks. But uh, maybe somebody do the math and get back to us. How many eights are we working with there? So uh, Psalm 90, I only got one verse for this one in time. It says, uh, Psalm 90, verse 12. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. So I guess in a couple of areas, you know, besides, you know, working, even even at work. Are you going to work and just, uh, you know, are you using your time, what I'll say is effectively in, 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 the, in the job place, you know, and, you know, that's really important, you know, uh, and Pastor Dan, so we want we don't be no stops on the couch at work. So, uh, hallelujah. So I, I believe God wants us to use our time effectively, whether it's at work. And when we get home, uh, I don't believe that the Lord just wants us to, to sit on the couch and and you know I'm just just throwing us out there. I'm not saying any of us do that, but just you know we, we get home if we're married and just look for opportunities to serve and bless the wife. Maybe my wife doesn't really like flowers that much. She like they take too much work. You know, if your wife likes flowers, go ahead and get flowers. You know, if you have to do it, go ahead. My wife likes she took this out. She likes balloons. I'm like that's cool. Balloons, eh? I don't know, like, I know that kind of weird. But, uh, you know, I we went to Walgreens and Valentine's Day, uh, they had balloons there. So I went and got a Minnie Mouse balloon and it's blown up and it's still floating in there. So you can still enjoy the balloon. You know, the flowers, they die in like four days, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Unless you got that, what they got, the special food they put in there. Well, you can make them in the potpourri and they smell good for a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you know, I'm saying it's time. Time. As men, you know, uh, when you get home, recharge. You know, I work at a, you know, it's not a physically taxing place, you know, whether it's construction, but at work, for me, it can be spiritually, it can be emotionally draining. I'm just saying it can be. And so I'm driving home, uh, I'm praying, God, I wanna leave work at work. I wanna take time right now to transition and invest in my wife and invest in the house. And sure, I'll walk by and pet the cat or whatever, you know, and, and uh, so Father, and so, um, you know, invest in time in, in the house and, and wherever you are, when you're at home, be present with your wife, you know, if you're waiting on things like that. I'm just, all right, you guys, I think you guys know, about that already. So I'm going to be wrapping up here my first closing. First closing. <laughs> first closing. All right. So. Yeah. Right? All right. Hallelujah. So again, we don't want to look back 
uh, five years, you know, from now, or 15 years, or even five months. God, God, help me right now, Lord God, to seek you. What do you want from me? Lord God, let me, maybe God just wants you in a season. Yeah. You know, there's Mary and Martha. Maybe God wants you just to sit at his feet. Not that you're not involved in, you know, in ministry, but maybe God wants you to sit at the Lord's feet, just really minister to him, and he'll minister to you. And, and think, not that we don't do that every day, but maybe what I'm saying is even more, you know, investment in, in the time of the Lord. And, um, this is, you know, um, so we don't want to, you know, just start well. We want to continue to continue well, and we, we and we also want to finish well. Uh, the reality is, you know, none of us are gathered. Excuse me, none of us are guaranteed another breath. You know, even another day or the year. Um, my friend Chris Snyder, he's on the other poster um, on the top left picture. That was my second year I went, and uh, he went to Mardi Gras a few times, and and uh, man, the healthy. Excellent man of God, you know, 24, 25 years old, he comes down with the cancer in his jaw, and uh, you know it spread quickly, and and he, and he and he passed from this glory to be with the Lord, and um, and then while I was in New Orleans, I think the first, yeah, actually the first year, there was a man on the streets like this. He would bring his guitar in the church. He would bring his guitar, and he he would play that the guitar in the Jackson Square area. And his name was Sonia. I figured out uh, some somebody called me a few months later. He passed on, and there was a. Uh, sure off. There was a man. Uh, he go in the middle of Bourbon Street, and uh, he had a cane, right? And uh, he had a cane. He just sit right in the middle, right in the middle of the multitudes with his cane, you know, like this. And he would lean on the cane, and and he pass out tracks. He trying to get one more track to somebody, one more gospel track to somebody, you know, one more track. And uh, you know, a few years, a couple, just, just a couple months later, my friend from Ohio, Todd Smith, that man passed away to be with God in glory. So I, what I share in those is sometimes we can think that we have tomorrow, we have this, we have that. I don't know. I just uh, we just want to. One of the things that I really want to live with, and I want us to grab a hold of, is 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 God. God wants us to live with with a, with a, just such an urgency, such an urgency. I really believe that God doesn't want us to just be comfortable on our couches. God, it's like was it was it. Was it Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it like an eagle when they have those, the, the hatchings or something, they have a nest, they actually take stuff out of the way to make the nest uncomfortable. If I'm, if you Let me know if I'm wrong. Then actually push them out and then to get them to fly or something like that. They get them, God wants us to get uncomfortable. And he wants us to have urgency. So a couple months ago, I don't know the exact timing, but it was end of January, beginning of February. I'm downstairs in my prayer closet and, you know, and I'll, I'm just doing other stuff in the basement. And then, uh, and then, uh, I smell something. I'm like, I'm like, what is that? I look, and there's people walking around. There's people walking around in our yard, and there's people walking around, and man, there's some firefighters out there, right? There's some firefighters. I'm like, what? Just come on, I smell smoking. Put put jacket on, shoes on, and I'm like, I'm not even fully clothed. I just ran outside, like, I'm like, I'm trying to, you know, I was a firefighter myself in four years in the Air Force, and then our, and I was, then when I was um, in, in uh, high school, we had in our in our house in Andover, Wisconsin. It was a, a hundred-year-old barn, literally. It was, it was dry and everything. And when I was in high school, there was literally, I woke up two or three in the morning, the whole thing was just engulfed in flames. This is in Iron right now. Uh, I go backwards and it will come back forward. So the whole thing, I just ran down the stairs. I said, the barn's on fire, the barn's on fire. And I'm screaming and everything. And, and so people need to hear the word. And so this, just, just to, to fast forward back here, uh, I go. I go to the first firefighter. You know, back back to where we're here on John Avenue, and I said, I said, is everybody okay? Is everybody? I said, is everybody out of the house? He said, the, this is what he said. He said, I don't know. I hope so. I'm like, I hope so. Wait, are you gonna know? You know, that's what I said. So I went to the next fire. Is everybody out? He said, I'm pretty sure. I said, well, that's not good. So I finally found someone with a different color hat. A different color hat. You know, that means they're pretty important. They're the fire chief. And he said, are they all out? He says, yeah, they're all out. So finally, I got down to the bottom of it. You know, we have to have an urgency, you know, to, to find out what, what is going on. You know, if there's a problem within me or if there's a problem within the church, we got to first look into it. It says the church, you know, you know, you know what I mean? And so, um, and then, and so that family, they, they didn't get out of the house. So it's time for us to step it up. You know, that's for me, as being a former firefighter and being, and seeing those events happen in my life, you know, experiencing, you know, a fire at, at the bar, you can smell the, the flesh is burning. You can smell it. You know, of the pigs and the cows and things like that. It just, they just mark you. You just have those events. They just mark you. Just, they just change it for life. It's just one of those things that just marked me and changed me for life. 
And so, um, all right, I don't have any more notes. I'm, 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 last closing. Last closing. So we need to step it up, I really believe. You know, as a ministry, as individuals, this is the marketplace with our character. And then we need to step it up. Being, being filled and powered by the Holy Spirit. I, I shared a couple weeks ago that, that the believer should to continually walk in, in a lifestyle of miracles. A lifestyle of miracles. And our last thing is, is, is we should prioritize. We take the roof out of this place. We should prioritize our time with the marketplace, the, the you know, things that we're doing. Prioritize our time. So I pray that you receive something today and you're able to take away something. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, I, you know, every every hour of history has been urgent. It really has. You know, and people say that the Lord's is trying. But we, we need to live with an urgency. I believe we need to live with an urgency. To, to live for the Lord and live unto the Lord and, and live our lives. You know, uh, live our lives. You know, it says it. Uh, I can't get the exact quote for Linda right now, but it says, uh, basically, what, what we've done for eternity is what's, is what's going to last. You know, everything else is going to fade. You know, whether it's what hay or stubble, you know, what, what we've done for the Lord, that's, that's what's going to last. Uh, I don't know what this is. I don't know how to, I'm not good at concluding. Um, I'm going to pray. Maybe uh, Matt just put something on your phone to that. Do the doohickey. <laughs> just some background music. And if you want prayer, we can pray. Otherwise, I'm just going to close in prayer. Here is a, Here. Yeah? You got some? Uh, a prayer. Uh, praise report. Yeah. You no. Know, and it doesn't, it seems rather trivial, but it isn't trivial. Because God heard a prayer and answered it. And uh, I, was, I went fishing with my brother and uh, <clears throat> brother-in-law, my cousin, went out to uh, North Dakota just this last week. And uh, <clears throat> these guys, I mean, they're good fishermen. I'm not a very good fisherman. But and, uh, I caught a few fish, you know, and uh, the one day, the last day we were there, there was no, hardly anybody was catching any fish. But I was, you know, I said, well, I'm going to pray that I catch some fish. I said, no, that's selfish. So I just began to praise God and look His creation. And uh, I did that for about an hour and a half, two hours. And all of a sudden, I started catching fish. And uh, the guys were standing there and they said, He's catching another one. Wow. He's, and I caught seven fish and I lost two or three in the, in the thing. But I just thank the Lord. I said, yeah. thank God for just providing, yeah. you know, for answering that. It was a prayer, but I just praised Him. It wasn't yeah. a prayer to catch fish, but it was a praise Him because He is my provider. Amen, yeah. That's awesome, thanks. Well, I'll close, I'll pray, and if, if you want prayer, come, come forward, I'll pray with you, or you grab somebody next to you. You know, I don't have to pray, but grab Pastor Scott, grab, grab, grab somebody. Um, let's just need a couple of moments to, to just a little space to to, to really seek the Lord for a couple minutes or whatever you have. Uh, Father God, I just thank you so much. Every person here, Lord, every man, Lord, every man represents whether it's a, a, a family, a marketplace, uh, basically uh, an influence, Lord God, uh, an area of influence, an area of impact, Lord God. Lord God, I pray that this would be a day that that you spoke to us, Lord God. We'll remember, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll chew on those things that you talked about, Lord God, whether it's the, our character, Lord God. Uh, speak to us right now, Lord God, those things that you want us to work on in our character, Lord God. Uh, speak to us also, Lord God, about uh, spending time with you, Lord God, spending time and being filled with the Holy Spirit, Lord God. There's something you want us to uh, uh, get out of our comfort zone to do, Lord God. I really pray that you would make it clear, Lord God, make it evident. And I pray that your word says in Habakkuk 2, Lord God, we will be able to, to write it down. We build a journal. Maybe if that's something you want us to do with our time, help us to manage our time effectively, Lord God. We're depending upon you to, to speak to us and direct our hearts and direct our lives, direct our steps, Lord God. We don't want to let a, let a day go by, let a week, let a month go by or, or a year, Lord God, and just kind of grasping straws or, or wondering what should have been, what could have been, or what 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 ifs, what ifs, Lord God. We want to, we don't need the what ifs, Lord God. You have a plan. 
Help us to seek you for it, Lord God. Help us to not only seek you, but help us to be resolute, Lord God. I pray that we we'll just that we would, Lord God, we'd be men of character, men of good, uh, as it says, in good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. I just pray you to bless these men, Father God. I just declare and speak blessing over these men and 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 their influence, their wives, their kids, where they work, Lord God, their ministries. Yes, God, I pray you would birth and continue to to start ministries, expand and grow the ministries that they're in, Lord God. In Jesus' name. Jesus.